We were going to do an uh, unsanctioned karaoke session. No, <laughs> kidding. Hello, everyone. My name is James Strong. I don't think it's moderated, so we can just get started. Yeah, yeah, we can. Awesome. I, I will self-moderate us. Gotcha. Welcome to our uh, comedy session. Thank you. Open mic. No. <laughs> I make jokes when I'm nervous, so uh, be prepared. Hello, everyone. My name is James Strong. I'm a solutions architect at ChainGuard, and what that means is I help people secure their software supply chains, um, look at gaps of those, and, uh, and I also help maintain Ingress and Nginx. And I wrote a book about networking and Kubernetes, but please don't ask me about your IP tables. <laughs> Hey, uh, my name is Ricardo. Uh, I am one of the maintainers as well. I am a software engineer at VMware. So when I'm not creating bugs at Ingress Nginx, I'm creating bugs at VMware products. Uh, so today we're going to talk, and uh, we're going to talk about understanding the future of Ingress Nginx. We're going to talk, so we did a uh, community survey probably about four or five months ago. Um, if you filled out that survey and you're here, thank you very much. We're going to talk about the stabilization project that we've been working on, and we're going to t uh, do a little discussion about the roadmap, some of the stuff, some of the bugs that Ricardo is introducing, and a little bit of Q&A if you have questions. So uh, this time is the community time, so if you have questions for us, um, just go ahead and uh, yell at us, throw things. Um, Ricardo will catch them. So we're going to talk about the community survey results. One of the first things we asked, uh, I thought it was pretty obvious, but I wanted to, we wanted to understand what people were using and what they thought was most critical in Ingress Nginx. And uh, that, makes pretty mu that makes sense, right? Load balancing and the fact that it was open source. So um, good to know that everyone's using it for what we intended to use it for. But um, we need to talk about that guy. He's on our roadmap. And for some of you who don't know, mod security is being deprecated. So. We're gonna have some work to figure that out. Versions of Kubernetes. Um, who's running anything older than 121? I do for testing. This is good. Um, we wanted to put this out there because, we, again, we wanted to understand what folks were using. And when we talk about what's supported, from our perspective, it's looking at um, the end-to-end -end tests that we run. So you'll see that uh, we run a lot of end-to-end -end tests. They take about 45 minutes to run each time we have a PR. So we want to make sure that those are supported. So we're also following the N-3. Um, and as some of you are probably aware, I think 122 is being deprecated soon. I'm looking at our SIG release here, Carlos. I always have questions for him. Um, so we're moving as Kubernetes is moving and uh, looking at understanding what we should be supporting. So if you have any feedback on that, uh, please let us know. What versions of Ingress are currently running in production? So of course, we have Ingress versus versions of Kubernetes. Really good. So back when we put the survey out, we were on 121. I think we're getting ready to release 1.5 with a couple new features and deprecating some things. But um, what's going on here, guys? <laughs> I started with, point, with 5.1. With five I, I did the 5.1 release. That was a year and a half ago. Yeah, that, it's not supported anymore. <laughs> um, this is really uh, a good thing. We, do, we try to make sure that we're keeping the documentation up to date. As new annotations, config maps, features get added, we want to make sure that we're answering those questions there because it's not fun answering the same question over and over again. And I eventually will uh, get the client IP thing documented. Because I think in the year and a half I've been working on this, we've been asked that about five or six times. So we have good answers to questions, so keep asking them. Keep demanding the documentation. This is also fun. Um, I would like to talk to the never person, but uh, this is always exciting that uh, people like Ingress Nginx. They continue to use it, and they would recommend it. So again, um, that's all part of what you guys are doing, the feedback that you're giving us, and the work that we continue to do. So thank you for that. I, I have actually a feeling that this part of the survey was just answered by our family. Like, I may have sent it to some Changar folks. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> this uh, also makes sense. We get a lot of questions about Helm. We get a lot of... Uh, um, as you'll see further on in some of the surveys, some of the open-ended questions, we get a lot of questions about Helm support, Helm documentation, and Helm uh, change logs. So 
Again, um, the multiple instances per cluster, that's going to be something I think that we need to discuss and probably document a little bit more. There are some hidden gems on trying to run multiple instances on one cluster that I know need documented that are in our backlog. But uh, for the most part, continuing to support Helm and keep that updated. This is also something that's really um, encouraging to see from the folks that answered the survey is that it's pretty easy to upgrade, but as you'll see in some of the open-ended things further on, it's, uh, it can be a little time consuming because there's lots of things you have to test and uh, we all know about uh, there's no easy way to uh, upgrade without reloading, so that's always fun. So going to the open-ended responses, we see a lot of things in here, again, the Nginx version, we know we're running a little old behind that. Um, it'll become apparent when we talk about some of the complexities with managing this project. Um, time and issues, we know that with the stability project, we've probably been neglecting some issues and we're working on making that a little easier. Um, some of the things we're looking to implement, right, are using a GitHub project to triage issues and work on that. Uh, before that, who knows what's the stabilization project that we are running? Because I think that something that that's yeah, that's going to come up after this. Oh, okay, so. sorry. But I yeah, no, that's that a good slide. question. Sorry, you, yeah, yeah. Do you guys that. know where we've been working on that? Who reads the <coughs> Kubernetes dev emails that they get all the time? No. Okay, that's yeah, all good. Yeah. Also, uh, it helps to attend the community meetings because we talked about that there, and we sent out the Kubernetes dev. If there are other forms of communication that we uh, that might be more helpful, um, I know I'm looking to investigate getting a uh, Twitter handle for Ingress Nginx. I think that might be helpful. What if anything stops you from updating Ingress Nginx? As I was talking about some of the instability issues that we've had lately in the past uh, you know, eight or so months, um, working on the V1, um, the leader, uh, the election, the lease API, all of the upgrades trying to maintain those things. So we know that there's been some issues. Um, ingress class is the big one. And that uh, a lot of these things, the change log, that's a lot of manual work. And we're working on, that's part of the stability project is uh, making these uh, automated. Um, some of the open stuff, uh, we see gateway a lot came up in the survey results, which makes sense. Everyone wants a uh, gateway implementation. That's open source. Who wants gateway API? In Ingress, in, it's here just to ask that. No, no, okay. maybe. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, the, the survey said otherwise. Yeah. So that is also one of the things that's on the roadmap that we'll discuss. But again, um, as you said, for those who filled out the survey, um, thank you. It did give us an indication that I think we're on the right track on the things that we're trying to accomplish from the stabilization project and what's going to be on the roadmap. And uh, it gave us a little bit of direction of things that, you know, we're working the project day in, day out that we don't see. And um, yeah, can you work on it? So again, thank you for that. So again, the stabilization project. Not a lot of people know about that, that's, so that, that's unfortunate, but we've been trying to work on some of these issues. Um, we set out to do these about nine or 10 different things. <laughs> so we've accomplished, in, I think we put this out in July, and we've accomplished these, uh, these three things. Um, so the N minus three we put out there, I think we've talked about it, we put a blog post out there, but again, a lot of people aren't seeing that. So we wanna make that a little bit more explicit. So we put that out there. We've also looked at implementing some of the open SSF recommendations and trying to make sure that the project is secure. Security's been since the, uh, our Lua fiasco a little while ago with that, one, that last major CVE that we've had, we've been trying to focus on security a little bit more. Um, we've implemented some security scanning so that we can see the CVEs as they come out. Um, we don't, we're not blocking on those yet, but I'm starting to think that we probably should. We're looking at introducing the Go vulnerability checker that just came out. So working on trying to make it a little bit more secure. And then from a features acceptance criteria perspective, release notes, we're using the SIG uh, release tool um, to generate those automatically for us so we don't have to do those by hand. Enforcing that they're in there in the PRs that you're putting together and that it's documented and that you have an end-to-end -end test. That's the, uh, that's the bar for us right now. Um, my opinion, it's a little low, but that's at least what we need. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and let Ricardo talk about this because he's the one who's been doing a lot of the, uh, this awesome work, not introducing bugs, but making it better for us. So, uh, <clears throat> sorry. 
I think that uh, everybody was aware of the CVs that we had in in past, and we are still getting some of those uh, to be announced or uh, happening. And uh, a lot of people actually asking me, like, what's wrong with Ingress in GINX that you are getting so many CVEs, and should we be concerned and maybe moving to another Ingress or not, right? So. Uh, uh, so first of all, if, if you want to move to another Ingress, I, I, I won't hate you. I used Ingress HA proxy for a long time ago, and I was one of the person that actually asked the, the, the guy that created Ingress HA proxy to create that. So no, no hard feelings, folks. Uh, the thing is that uh, when Ingress Nginx was created, uh, we had uh, an architectural choice, which was right by, by that time, because we didn't know how this thing was going to scale, <clears throat> that runs uh, the proxy in GINX together with the controller, right? Yeah. On the same container, yeah. So uh, if something goes wrong and you can uh, kind of force uh, the controller to write in the configuration file of the GINX, you may maybe extract information like the token that is used by the controller to connect to Kubernetes API server, right? And we did a bunch of explanation on that in some of the meetings, uh, in one of the community meetings really explaining and being transparent with you on how this actually can be explored because we want people actually to let us know that there are other ways of doing those information extraction that may cause problems, right? And uh, if you look into uh, Ingress at all, Ingress controllers at all, they are probably the most risky component that you may have in your cluster, right? Because you don't expose your API server to the internet. You don't expose the kubelet ports or whatever to your uh, network. But you expose uh, uh, Ingress controller in GINX because that's the proxy to your, to your application, right? So we are aware of that. And uh, then we uh, started thinking, how can we improve this bar, looking how the other projects of the community they are doing? So uh, we have this amazing project that's ongoing, which is called Kaping. Uh, that's the new Kube proxy that have some sort of similar problem. We know that Contour folks and Envoy folks, they do the same thing, which is, we should split privileges right now. Uh, this is the way that we should deal with this. So that's what the splitting control plane and data plane is. So effectively, what we are doing is we are re-architecting in Resin GINX to have a, just a control plane that is responsible to connect to Kubernetes API, and it will just uh, do all of the calculations and create uh, the right uh, data model for the data plane. So the data plane will consume just uh, front ends, back ends, certificates, whatever gets updated, but won't have access anymore directly to the Kubernetes API server. And this will, should, I hope, probably also help uh, getting some better performance in your cluster because you won't have more like 50 or uh, 100 ingress controllers instances consuming the, the Kubernetes API. You have probably three control planes doing that, maybe one just in a leader election uh, 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 sort of working. We didn't decide that yet. And then you, you have the data planes just consuming via gRPC or XDS. We are just figuring out how the data plane, the wire is going to work, but the control plane. And the control plane, if something got compromised in your data plane, you just be able to consume whatever you are supposed to consume anyway, which is the front end and the back ends and the data model, right? Uh, we are also discussing, starting to discuss with the Kaping folks if instead of doing all of those this work, which is almost done in Ingress controller, I'm just trying to fix the end-to-end -end tests. Otherwise, James is not going to allow me to merge. But uh, if we can use what they are doing for Kaping in a layer seven fashion, and how this can be helpful for other Ingress implementations as well. So uh, we are going to discuss about the gateway API, but can I use the same approach to have a control plane for gateway API generating the data model and backend implementators just need to implement like uh, Nginx, HA proxy, whatever, consuming that control plane and not like having to consume the whole gateway API model. So that's what we've been looking for and I'll be kind of looking forward to work next week with the Kaping folks as well. Yeah, and then on the uh, Nginx side, so there are a couple things that stop us from going directly to like 123 and things like that. A lot of the uh, functionality that you'll see probably from like the Enterprise Nginx version, we implement that with Lua and Open Rusty. So we can't support the Nginx versions until all of the, I think, 43 dependencies 
that we pull in support that version. So it takes a lot of time and effort to make sure that all of those dependencies we're using support that Nginx version and pass all of our Nginx tests. I think as of last week, that was completed. And I think it's just sitting in our queue to actually accept it. But we're waiting till Tuesday. And for those who are paying attention, probably know why. We'll have another uh, vulnerability we'll have to patch. And then as part of streamlining the release process, that goes along with automating the release notes, automating the build process. Um, one of the uh, specs that we talk about is that it takes about four hours if we do everything properly the first time to get a release out. And uh, I don't know about you, Ricardo, but I've not got it right once. There's always one little thing that we miss. Changelog doesn't get updated. There's a version that didn't get updated. So we're working on trying to automate that entire process. Um, yeah. And looking at a distro list build, more to come on that one. But we didn't get finished. Um, we know that there are issues with the ingress class logic that we've implemented. So that is on um, the backlog from after we get the data plan and CP split working through. Um, there are lots of modules that we use. There's lots of dependencies and looking at and understanding um, what we need to remove. Again, for the stability of the project, there are lots of other containers and tools that we use that haven't been touched in two or three years. So we're actually actively removing those from the project and using newer versions of things for that re um, respect. So trying to do that. And we also still have the legacy branch out there. So anything that's um, pre-119, so we're looking at removing that availability. So we haven't done that yet, but they've been in discussions. So that's why we asked the question of why are people using, still using 5.1. You said about pod security policy or not? Uh, pod security policy is on there as well. It wasn't part of the stability project, but it is, um, it is on the backlog. It's going to be removed. So yeah. heads up, if you have pod security policies, we are going to remove them from Ingress as well. Yeah. So as part of the roadmap, um, before we discuss the roadmap, and as we, we were talking about, I wanted to just run through and give folks a little idea of what all is in that repository and what all we actually maintain and look at. So we use all four of these technologies. So when we need to upgrade something, all four of these have to work. So the Golang version, Alpine version, Nginx, and the Lua versions, I lump open Rusty in there. So when we update one of those, that's that four hour build time that we talk about. And make files and shell scripts. Make files and shell scripts, shell on shell on shell. I'm working on getting rid of our shell shepson, as I've been liking to call it. We also maintain a kubectl plugin. Does anybody know that we have a plugin? Some people. Anybody knows that it's not working? <laughs> yes. <laughs> uh, two monitoring frameworks. So we support Prometheus and Grafana dashboards. We actually produce our own Grafana dashboards. We get a lot of questions on those as well. Uh, three third-party plugins, so mod security is one of those plugins. Um, we have to figure out how we're going to replicate that functionality. I'm sure there are other people in the community who have that same exact issue, so we have not engaged anyone from that conversation. Um, Matt, uh, Nat Geo is one of them, so GeoIP, and I forget what the third one is. Uh, open telemetry. Open telemetry. The, before open, te open tracing. Yeah. Open tracing, yeah. So we do have the open telemetry uh, PR completed and end test is passing, and that's also probably going to be part of the 1.5 release. Like I said, it takes four hours to build this if we do things properly. We have seven static configurations. So not only do we produce a Helm chart for this, um, we also support specific implementations for like AWS, DO, things like that. So we have to help maintain those as well. 12 other container images. So we build two container images, right? Ingress controller and Nginx. So Nginx is our base image, but we also maintain 12 other container images and have to keep those updated. So new Alpine version comes out, yeah. Anyone knows how, what are the other ones? We have echo image, default backend. Web search generator. Web search generator. Custom errors. Custom errors, yeah. I don't know. HTTP bin, but that's the one that's getting HTTP bin, but yeah, we just, yeah. We also support 30 Nginx modules, so when we compile it, that's, that's, that's the bulk of the time, is compiling Nginx. 
with the 43 dependencies, we compile it and test it across four architectures, three Kubernetes versions, and it all has to work in Helm and the other static configurations. 68 ingress Nginx command line flags. So being able to configure it, what port it runs on, where your cert's coming from, where your logs go. 100 plus E2E tests, and if anybody else is looking at that math, some of the things that we are talking about, the configuration options, we don't have all of our tests covered, so it's not a full end-to-end -end test suite. Yeah. 118 annotations, so that's how you customize Nginx. There's a couple different ways, right? There's annotations and there's config maps. And there's 186 of those configuration options. I didn't do the math on that, what that permutation is, but that's a lot to make sure that continues to stay running. So when we talk about, um, when we haven't seen your PR or we haven't accepted your feature request or you know, there's an issue, there's a CVE out there, we just wanted people to understand what the complexity is to manage this project. So please be kind, but also if you have an issue or if something's wrong, we have a Slack channel, we have our community meetings, and you know, just come and engage with us. And help us. And help. <clears throat> yeah. I was gonna wait to ask that later. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So from the roadmap perspective, um, I think we talked a little bit already about the data plane control plane split. Once Ricardo gets all of those 100 plus in the end to end tests passing, we're gonna do the same thing that we did with the V1. We'll put out alpha, let people test it, once that moves through alpha to beta. And please, please, please test. Because uh, when we did the V1 and we released the alpha and the beta, and we got a lot of bugs when it was released for GA, and we said, like, hey, folks. Because we didn't get any feedback. Yeah, 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 yeah. And like, we didn't have like some clusters to test that. So if you have some cluster that you can test it, like I can run a canary with this ingress doing, like not directing my traffic, but at least applying my own annotations, as James said, like uh, some things, they, we, we cannot test all of the combinations. And if you figure out something, just let us know. Uh, it's important for us because we don't want to know that we broke something just when we release something too stable. That's not stable. Once we get that out, uh, we didn't really talk about, so when we first had that CV come out, we added the CH root environment. So that's, so we produced two containers, right? The CH root, which, uh, helps with that CVE vulnerability that we've talked about. We'll go ahead and remove that once we get uh, the CPDP split to GA. Adding the dish list build as well, um, I'm about 90% there. I can, I've got the build time down from four hours to about 10 minutes now. So that's great. We're not recompiling everything all, all the time. And as soon as Carlos gets me a GCP bucket, we'll be good. <laughs> Um, cont again, continue to improve the release process. Open telemetry, like I said, that, that pull request is there. It's waiting for us to hit the LGTM button. Explicit deprecation policy, again, continuing to make that apparent to people. When we say what's deprecated, we're saying that it runs in the end-to-end -end test suite and we know as well as we can that it's working. And then reviewing those third-party dependencies um, like mod security. Now, I'll let, I think we already talked and hit on the Gateway API with the Kaping, unless there's anything else you wanted to add. Mm, not that I can remember. Anybody uh, familiar with uh, MTLS and gRPC calls? <laughs> no? Okay. I was asking questions. Um, and then uh, one of the feedbacks that we got was, uh, you know, you guys, I think I made it pretty clear about the complexity of the project. People get upset about the stale bot and lifecycle rotten. We're gonna remove that bot, yeah. and we're gonna to move to the project, so as um, issues get added, you know, make sure that we're actually moving through the project instead of just trying to move through the 255 open issues and I think 55 pull requests that we have open right now. 70. What? That's 70 pull requests. Oh, uh, yeah. Um, two other things. I went to the tag security meeting yesterday. We're gonna go work through the threat modeling and get that evaluated working through the project and understanding what else we can do to help secure Ingress Nginx. And then um, engaging uh, SIG Contributor X to understand how we can continue to work evolving the community. And then this one might be a little bit controversial, but trying to understand uh, Lua, we, we have difficulty getting Lua developers so either more Lua developers or looking at 
uh, migrating to Engine, Nginx, and JS. Yeah. Here, <clears throat> I want to use this moment actually to give a big shout out. Uh, I'm, I'm not sure if, if Elvin is here. He was talking with me yesterday. But Elvin uh, from Shopify is the one that actually implemented the, all of the Lua stuff because Nginx didn't uh, support it, hot reloads, right? So he solved a bunch of people problem with that uh, because we all, the, the, the original reason that we moved to HA proxy in my previous company was because of the hot reloads as well, right? So uh, you have a reload and you keep reloading and you just break the connection. So Elvin and Alejandro, which are uh, the, re the real persons that actually created all of these and, 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 and I wanna give a huge shout out to them. Uh, they have moved forward uh, doing uh, their stuff. Elvin, uh, I hope that he can keep contributing with, with us as well. Uh, I, I will speak with him uh, because he, he, he is our uh, Lua maintainer, right? So he is the person that did all of those things. But it's hard for us, uh, like I do this on my Sunday, uh, really. And uh, I, I do mostly of the Go stuff and Nginx stuff and, and maintaining all of this Lua burden, it's, it's kind of hard for us. So Jintao, which is the other maintainer that's in, in China, he does a lot of things as well. But uh, the thing is that if we don't have more people actually willing to maintain the Lua part of code, uh, we cannot keep accepting features. So people ask us like, hey, can you have canary by colors? Like I put the color blue or color red in the query and it like, I don't know the impact of adding that thing. So if I don't know, I cannot say, hey, I'm going to maintain that or not, or if th th there's going to be a CVE or not, right? So this is a call for people, actually. We need help on this part of the code. We need help in any part of the code, actually. But the, uh, the Lua part is something that, uh, for me, right now, it's a risk on the project because we don't have enough people maintaining that, and it's the core of the project, right? So that's where the load balancing actually happens. And with that, like I said, uh, call action. Um, we discuss all of these things in our dev Slack channel. Um, we have the user support channel for folks asking questions. Um, and then we have the new contributor docs where we're working on trying to understand, putting together like all of those architectures, understanding how the build works and things like that. So we've been trying to put new contributor docs together. There's the meeting notes. We meet every other Thursday at 11. And then the, we, we record them all. And then there's the survey data if anybody wants. Um, but uh, thank you. Um, for coming, and now if there's any time for questions, things like that. We want questions, actually. I yeah. think we've got like eight minutes. Let me just put my mask here. Thank you very much for the, the product. I've been using it for probably two or three years, and it's very helpful for me. Um, only one thing that I've tried to use and it wasn't supported was the AMQ support, because we have rep, uh, MQ and we wanted to route RepMQ stuff through NGX and that wasn't supported, so I had to do some some stuff to handle it. Other than that, everything was great. Um, one question that I have is, there is some sort of interpolation with the Gateway API, and I know that there is a project right now called Gateway API. Can you guys talk about this? Like, what is, is it gonna be a blend? How is it gonna work it out together or it's not gonna work it out together? So uh, I'll be here, okay? You don't mind, right? I'm short anyway. So uh, uh, we have uh, we have gate. Okay, we have the API gateway, which it's not the case, right? We have gateway API, the project that's a new brand API for layer seven, layer seven routing and layer four also inside uh, Kubernetes uh, clusters, which is what we are targeting to have support in Ingress, right? And uh, the Envoy community created the Envoy Gateway, so I'm not sure if that's the mess uh, with this, which is kind of a way of creating the same thing that we want, but for all of the uh, uh, ingresses. But in their case, they support just Envoy Gateway, uh, Envoy Backhead uh, uh, project. So you have an Envoy control plane that uh, deals with all of the uh, Gateway API objects and, and, and generates a data model for uh, a configuration model for Envoy Backhead uh, controllers, right? So. In our case, what we are looking for is actually supporting this new brand API from Kubernetes that Rob Scott and all of the other folks uh, from Sig Network, they are uh, drawing and architecting. Uh, I guess it was in the same room yesterday and it was packed, right? So we know that we need to, to, to figure out about that. We have a bunch of questions of that. The problem is just about uh, time and prioritization, right? So I was planning to support a, a gateway API until all of those CVs appeared. 
So my question now is, do you prefer gateway API or a vulnerable ingress? <laughs> Right, so that's, uh, I, I do prefer right now fixing those CVEs and again, if someone wants to help me in implementing the Gateway API, help me when I say that's helping the community, but yeah. like mostly I'm finishing the split, so we need more people willing to do that. But uh, we have plans, do you wanna speak about the timeline on that? Uh, make promises? Uh, he's like yeah, a product yeah. manager, he's just gonna make <laughs> promises that I'm not gonna cover. No, you, 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 <laughs> like I said, July, we said we were gonna complete all of those things from the stabilization project, but uh, yeah, we're all you know working on this on our separate times, and I get some time from ChainGuard because Sigstore does use Ingress Nginx, so I get helpful from that perspective. But uh, yeah, I, I think our prioritization right now has been just security and stability versus yeah. features, um, because that you know nobody likes their uh, certificate keys being stolen. It wasn't a popular decision, but someone had to take that, and we decided like in the community meeting to take the decision of freezing features and having something stable. Even if people say, yeah, I'm gonna use another ingress because the support the gateway API, that's, that's fine. Again, that's totally fine and we understand that. But we need to clean our house first. Yep. Any, anyone? We have one here, one here. Okay, I'm gonna pass through. Hi, um, just wanna say first, thank you for maintaining the project. Uh, we've been using it for, I don't know, five years. Um, so. I'm not sure, is there, is it an official like CNCF, whatever the status of the project is incubating or something and do you have an idea of the, how many users the project has, like what is the adoption rate and maybe that can lead towards like, does, this, can the CNCF help this project become more organized so it's not just on a few that, maintainers, I mean, I, yeah. Oh, I, I would say, and I don't think it's a controversial topic when we say that you know all of the projects need help ma maintainership. But um, you know we got 13.7 thousand stars. Um, there are some other dev stats that I tried to pull, um, but we are a sub project in the sig, uh, sig networking, so it's not a top level project like you you know like Envoy and other things like that. So there's a differentiator um, from that perspective. But uh, that's why we've, you know, working with SIG Contributor X, working with SIG Release, understanding how we can make things uh, better from that perspective. And, you know, working with SIG Security every time, you know, they're very responsive on helping us figure out how we triage these issues and how do we coordinate the communication. So we do get support from the CNCF projects and Nginx is working with us. Um, we've been talking with their product man, the head of product marketing there. Yeah, could you clarify that part a bit? Because I always get it. Is it ingress nginx or nginx ingress? Is nginx ingress totally different? I know plus so, is different, but <laughs> nginx. Uh, that was actually the first uh, um, topic that we broached with nginx. We have an open issue. They have a blog post, and we've been trying to work through and understand that. So ingress nginx is how we've been identifying the project, and then they have the nginx ingress controller. So. We do have an open issue for that, so we people can first. understand that difference. But Nginx is working on helping us support the project. I have one here. Um, yeah, I see a lot of, like, all, like you said, all the open source projects are, are desperate for help, but I'm just curious, is there any kind of packet or, or you know, set of instructions to help IT professionals and IT teams to make the case to their employer, um, hey, you know, we, we use this product, we should dedicate some of our development time towards uh, contributing to open source, rather than each person trying to make that case on their own, like maybe if there was some kind of template or some kind of guide or help to um, kind of take that to upper management and, and you know, maybe just an idea to get more contributors. That is a very good suggestion, and I will take that. I know that um, Paris has been talking about, I think she was in Contributor X, she was talking about that, like how do we make the case that it helps advance the career, helps people in, you know, helps organizations, you know, supporting open source. So we've got to continue to have that message, but having a, a solidified message, a template, um, that I think that would be really helpful. Um, that's something I think I'm gonna take the Contributor X and see what we can do to get that added. Um, but as far as uh, helping the project, like I said, we have the, the, the new contributor docs, the community meetings are open and available, the notes are all there from all of our meetings. Um, so if you have any questions about, um, during that, I'm gonna be here, I'm gonna be available. I'll be at the Chain Guard booth at 1.30, so if you have any questions, just let me know. I have a question about... I think about, we got one more, yeah. Yeah, sorry. Um, my CEO was reached out by Nginx, the company, to say that if we 
purchased the support contract, that's it not, would help. And, okay, go ahead. Yeah, that's not ours. I said no. The, if you purchase a support contract from Nginx, it's for the Nginx ingress controller. Yeah, yeah. So not the not not the open source. Yeah. Okay. No problem. We get that question a lot. So I I, I know from versions when someone asks a question and they drop the version in there, I'm like, that's uh, that's F5. That's not Kubernetes. So yeah. We so get that. We get it all the time. Yeah. We are out of, out of time. We are out of time. Okay. We're available for questions afterwards. So thank you all for coming. Thank you, folks.